Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending May 12, 2023. I'm Sophie Antel Gibert, and I'm joined today by my colleague Bei Chen Lin, Investment Strategy Analyst for Russell Investments. Hello, Bei Chen, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Sophie? I am wonderful. It's great to see you. And I am looking forward to getting your take on three things that have sort of been dominating headlines this week. I was thinking maybe we could touch on the Bank of England meeting that just happened. Um, any highlights of the CPI inflation release data that just came out? And then also on recession watch, recession risk watch. Does that sound good? Sure. Awesome. Let's start with the Bank of England. They just met, as we're recording this today on May 11th, they just met earlier today. What were the highlights that came out of that meeting and what is your outlook for the British economy? Sure. So the Bank of England voted in a 7-2 decision to raise their interest rates by 25 basis points. So we're moving past those day of 50, 75 basis point hikes. We're now down to 25 basis point rate hikes. At the same time though, the monetary policy rate in England is now well into restrictive territory. And so that has the effect of likely slowing down the economy. And as the interest rates go higher and higher, because the risk of inadvertently tipping the economy into recession becomes more elevated, central banks will want to proceed more cautiously, look at the data, and then decide whether or not they need to further raise interest rates. And so the path of monetary policy in Britain from here on in is really going to depend on the data. And this data is hard to forecast. So in today's monetary policy decision, the Bank of England referenced that their new revised economic outlook for the British economy was significantly stronger than their expectations back in February, although they're still expecting a subdued economic growth by historical standards. So that just shows you how tough the Bank of England's job is and how tough the job it is of central bankers across the world because they have to make policy decisions based on the data. But at the same time, a lot of this data comes out with a lag and their monetary policy actions act with a lag. And so they're trying to navigate this difficult situation of trying to bring inflation back down the target. But at the same time, they don't want to tip the economy into a recession. Now, if they had to choose between the two options, their number one priority is still fighting inflation, even if that means the potential for over tightening. Well, let's let's stick on that topic of inflation um, for a minute longer. We had inflation data released to, in the U.S. this week in the form of the CPI sort of measurement of inflation. What is that telling us about where inflation stands in the U.S. right now? I know you've been keeping a really close eye on that. So if you look at core inflation rates in the U.S., the month-over-month -month increase was about 0.4%, which was pretty in line with consensus expectations. Where it gets interesting is if you look at the decomposition. So this month, we actually saw a bit of a pickup in durable goods inflation. Most of that related to used car prices reaccelerating month-over-month. -month. Of course, one month doesn't make a trend, but that will be something important for us to monitor. And then in terms of the other side of the inflation equation, the big component that a lot of people are paying attention to is the shelter costs and the core services. So shelter inflationary pressures, they're off of their peaks, but they're still somewhat elevated. And wage sensitive sectors, so if we look at core services, excluding medical, shelter, and transportation, those sectors are actually showing a little bit stickier inflation, and they show a bit of a reacceleration of inflationary pressures on a month over month basis. We also got some data out of the Atlanta Fed wage tracker this week that showed that wage pressures in the U.S. are still sticking around. Wage growth is about just over 6% year over year if you look at the smooth version and just over 5% year over year if you look at the unsmooth version. In both cases, those are above levels that would be consistent with the Fed's inflation target. And so the Federal Reserve needs to make sure that policy continues to be at a restrictive setting long enough so that they can restore demand and supply back into balance in the labor markets to help to cool off some of those inflationary pressures. So really that's what the inflation report is telling us. Now, in terms of what the central bank does next, the Fed at its previous meeting in May hinted very strongly that it might be able to go on hold in June. We think that because of how far the central bank has lifted interest rates, they've done over 500 basis points of tightening already, that they have a very high bar for raising interest rates even further. 
It doesn't mean that they're going to rule out the possibility of raising rates. If inflation continues to be a problem and continues to remain elevated, we think that Chair Powell will do what he needs to do to bring inflation back down under control. But based on this report, we still think it's possible for the Federal Reserve to pause rates in June rather than having to raise them once again. So I know you've been keeping a really close eye on inflation, and that was a really helpful update. Closely linked to that is Recession Watch. Um, Markets in the U.S. seem to be relatively happy at the moment um, or getting happier than they've been earlier, earlier this year. What is your take on recession risk for the remainder of this year at the moment? So I have bad news and good news to share. Let's start with the bad news first because no one likes bad news. Unfortunately, our outlook is still that we expect a mild to moderate recession in the U.S. in the next 12 to 18 months. And I know it's hard to think about a potential recession with the S&P as elevated as it is. But one of the things I like to remind viewers is is that when you think about a plane making an approach to the airport, that approach really depends on the type of airport it's at. Sometimes it's a steep approach, sometimes it's a shallow approach, but eventually as that plane comes into the airport, you will see its speed slow down, you will see the plane lose altitude. Similarly, if you look at some of the leading economic indicators in the U.S., you're already seeing ISM manufacturing slowing down. You're already seeing temporary help employment peaking, and that generally tends to lead broader changes in the overall labor market. So there are signs pointing to a likely slowdown in the U.S. economy. But the good news is that because of the healthy position that consumers are in, because their debt levels are for the most part still manageable, and because businesses, consumers, and regulators have learned for the most part the lessons from the 2008 financial crisis, they know not to repeat those same mistakes, we think that that will help keep the recession on the mild to moderate side. So we would advise investors that this is the time to stay disciplined. We think that it's important to stick to your strategic beliefs. And for any investors who want additional information, we will be releasing our May economic update very shortly. So please keep an eye out for that. Terrific. Well, thanks. That's all we have time for today, Bei Chen. But thank you so much for your insights. And it sounds like you'll be publishing some more insights very soon on the RussellInvestments.com website and specifically on the blog as well. So for those of us who might want to pick up the thread here and hear more from Bei Chen and from his colleagues in the strategist team before maybe even next week, um, definitely go ahead and check out on RussellInvestments.com. And otherwise, we'll see you again here very soon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.